Now, 50 years ago, Prime Minister Robert Menzies struck a deal paving the way for Japan to become our largest export market. But with the growth of China, Japan is, of course, no longer number one. Opposition MP Josh Frydenberg has just returned from Tokyo, and he thinks it's time for a refocus. He joins us now. Josh Frydenberg, good morning. Good morning to you, Michael. You were there as a guest of the Japanese government. Uh, is the government concerned Australia is taking the eye off the ball when it comes to this relationship? I don't think it's concerned with taking the eye off the ball, but they're certainly wanting to refocus the relationship.、Um, the Japanese economy is pretty flat; it's about the same size as it was 20 years ago, and they have a prime minister there in Shinzo Abe, who's、uh, got a major reform agenda、uh, in terms of、uh, productivity and flexibility in the economy, as well as a major fiscal stimulus of over 100 billion dollars. But it's in the strategic、uh, and political area where they are feeling pretty vulnerable, and that's because they have a maritime dispute with the Chinese over what they call the Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea, and they're also concerned about the brinksmanship by the North Korean leader, the 29-year-old Kim Jong Un, and so they're looking for friends in the world, and obviously they have an alliance. Partnership with the United States, but they're certainly looking to Australia. And the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe made an important speech to the Japanese Parliament in February to the Diet, in which he specifically named Australia as a country in which he wanted to deepen ties. Strategically, though, what can Australia do? We have to walk this very fine line between the economic importance of China and our own strategic and historic relationship with the U.S. Well, I think there could be further defence cooperation, certainly at a multilateral level, whether it's trilateral exercises with other countries like the United States, or at a bilateral level. They have specific expertise around submarines, and in Australia, as you know, we have the Collins-class submarines, but there's also a bipartisan commitment for another dozen submarines in the coming years.、Uh, we can cooperate on in areas like cyber security and cyber warfare, where you know that's front of the mind at the moment,、uh, and then obviously. Disaster management.、Uh, you know, Japan knows through its own experience in 2011 with the tsunami, which killed more than 20,000 of its own citizens. That Australia has specific expertise there. We worked with the Japanese at that time with our C-17s and our search and rescue personnel. So there's more we can do in terms of disaster management coordination. Economically speaking, one very quick way to refocus the relationship is、uh, signing up to this long、uh, negotiated free. Trade agreement with Japan. Are you, are you worried about the pace of those negotiations? Yeah, absolutely.、Uh, the coalition believes that the government's taken too long to complete a, a range of、uh, free trade negotiations, including with Japan. And Japan, Michael, has 13 other free trade agreements in existence at the moment. And Australia obviously has one with、uh, the United States and other countries as well. So there's no reason why Japan is our second largest export market. Behind China,、uh, why we can't conclude a free trade agreement? We should have done it、uh, a long time ago, and we must do it as a matter of urgency because. Every day that we don't have a free trade agreement, but other competitor countries in the region do, our exporters are put at a commercial disadvantage. It's been these negotiations have been dragging on for some years now. How much more quickly, realistically, would a coalition government, if one was elected, reach such an agreement? Well, we would just, you know, put the shoulder to the wheel.、Um, we would get that deal done. I mean, if there's going to be an issue, for example, over tariffs on beef,、um, then you know you've got to get down and try to reach agreement. It's a matter. Of, it's a matter like, of like will cut, here. Like cutting tariffs on beef, would that be something? Well, for them, we want them to cut their tariffs. See, they have a 38.5 percent tariff. On beef, but Australia is still the number one beef exporter, Michael, to Japan. Now, if we can get that beef、uh, tariff down further, then that's obviously going to open up more markets for Australia, and we can push out the American exports to Japan. So, you know, we, we, there's going to have to be some give and take in any free trade agreement, but I certainly think there's scope to get a quicker free trade agreement concluded. Well, I've got you, Josh Frydenberg. A quick domestic political question: Do you support the constitutional recognition of local governments? Look, I have my doubts about it.、Um, certainly, within the coalition, there are varied views about it. But we've said, you know, let's let's go to a referendum and see what the Australian public say. As you know, Michael,、uh, referendums are very difficult.、Uh, only eight out of 44 in Australia have been successful. But what we're really critical of the government about is the fact that they are just funding the yes case and not the no case, and that's you know, inappropriate. And Tony Abbott's written. 
to the uh, written to the Prime Minister about this issue, asked them to correct it and to stop playing politics with this issue because clearly the government is just trying to divide the coalition on this issue and to make a distraction away from the main game, which is the federal election on September 14. Was Tony Abbott therefore too quick to sign up to this and would you like him to change the coalition position to a no vote? No, I'm not saying that to him, but I'm saying, uh, you know, and he understands this, that in the coalition there is a strong view that uh, the government has mishandled the process, and Tony's the first to say that. So I think Tony's actually handled it very well to date, and he knows that the Australian people want to have a vote on September the 14th, and the way this government's going, you know, hopefully it will lose, and we don't want any distractions from that main game. OK, Josh Frydenberg, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thanks very much, Michael. Yes, it's one of the curios of the last 48 hours in federal politics that the federal government is chipping in a fraction of the money to fund the no campaign mm. in advance of that referendum on uh, federal election voting day in, uh, in September, just a fraction of what they're giving the yes campaign. Uh, and that's uh, having to argue that position and maintain that position is, is getting increasingly difficult for the local government minister, Anthony Albanese, it seems. That's right. And as Josh Frydenberg has mentioned, uh, there are a lot of doubts within the coalition party room. All of this is overshadowed, of course, by the uh, focus on the Labor Party. So we'll be putting that to the opposition's local government spokesman, Barnaby Joyce, when he joins us in about 15 minutes as well. Let's stay with federal politics for the time.